What's up, sports designers? Mike with Sports Templates here, and we're back at it again to show you this new After Effects animated shirt template. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make this awesome Just Do It design. And you'll be able to get this animation like this and actually get it in a couple of different views as well. So before I do, just do me a little favor, hit those like and subscribe buttons. Okay, and down in the description, you're also gonna find some useful information, so make sure you check it out there. There's a link to a library that has all the assets that you'll need to replicate this design. So the gradient and, and the, the logos and everything are there for you to use. Uh, just to make it easy to follow along if you wanna do that with this video. Let me show you that animation one more time. Just how cool is that? The shirt kinda spins and starts to swirl. So we're gonna show you how to do this using After Effects and Photoshop. There's a linked Photoshop uh, template that's gonna work with After Effects to make all this work for you. And then we'll show you how to export everything in a bunch of different sizes, how to make a loop, everything you could possibly want to do. So let's get started. So let's take a look at everything you get with this package. With this, with this template package, you get the After Effects file and it comes with three different composition sizes. So you get the square like we see here, we just saw in the video. You also get story, so like phone screen size. You also get HD, so like a widescreen monitor size or if you turn your phone sideways kind of thing. Um, now all of these are linked, so when you make a change, uh, in one in, in the Photoshop template or in, on the colors and things here, it it applies to all the different sizes. And then you can just I'm hitting the space bar to play the animation. I'm going to use my scroll wheel to to zoom in a little bit, so you can pan through the animation. And it's going to buffer, so your quality may not be great while it's doing that, especially depending on uh, how powerful your computer is, your your graphics card, your GPU, all that stuff. Um, so try not to have a lot of other things running while you're using this just to just to make it easy. And so when you open this up, you're going to see all this stuff and you may not have the same view. OK, so um, in order to get the view that I have, there's a couple things you're going to need to do. One, you're going to want libraries over here. So if you don't have that, just go to window and turn on libraries. And then the same thing here with essential graphics, um, window, essential graphics and turn that on. When you turn on libraries, you, you may see essential graphics sort of um, disappear so just turn it on that's how we're going to control pretty much everything now when you download the file it's a zip file it's going to have a bunch of things in it it's going to have the after effects file it's going to have the photoshop template and it's going to have an assets folder and that assets folder has a bunch of stuff in it that makes all this work you don't need to do anything with it but you need to have it and you need to have them all in the same location. So I just dropped all of them on my desktop and that way they can sort of talk to each other. If you have them in different folders, it's not gonna work. So make sure you put them all in the same location near each other, you know, create a subfolder for them, whatever you wanna do. I'm gonna go back to Square just cause I like to edit in that mode. So let's talk about the other thing you need to do this. There is a plugin, it's called UV Pass. There's a link to it in the description. You can go get it, download it for free. And you need to install it in order to make all this work. Now it's really easy to install. I'm gonna show you how to do it real quick on PC. And afterwards, Ollie will show you how to do it on Mac. So if you go to, let's say you download it, right? And it's on your desktop or wherever it is. If you just go to your C drive, program files, Adobe, and then go to whichever After Effects folder, um, I'm using the most recent version, then go to Support Files, and then finally go down to Plugins, and then just drop it in there. And you can see I've already done that here. Uh, so it's FTUV Pass 64. So that's all you need to do. And then once you've done that, restart After Effects just to make sure that you know the plugin takes effect and, and it's uh, everything's able to work properly. Let me pass it over to Ali real quick. He's gonna show you how to do that same thing on a Mac. Hey, Ali here, taking over from Mike to show you how to do this on the Mac. And to do it on the Mac, you're going to get, uh, after you download FDU VPass plugin, you can just double click on it. It's going to extract. Once you open that file, that folder, there's two options. There's one for Windows and one for Mac. You go into the Mac one and then you copy uh, this FDU VPass 64 plugin. And then you can go to applications. So inside of applications, you just you just need to search for After Effects. Uh, you can double click on it, 
And inside of After Effects, you can just go into the Plugins folder, double click on it. You just click Command V to paste that plugin. It's gonna ask for your password. Okay. And it's gonna place it in here. Now, if you have uh, a MacBook that's running an M1 or M2 Apple silicone, uh, you just need, before you start After Effects, you need to uh, right click on it and get info. And in here, you need to make sure that you have open using Rosetta. So this is needed for the plugin to work uh, because it's not optimized for M1 uh, silicone. So the trade-off is this will make your render times slower, but the file, the, the 3D, uh, the 3D graphics wrapping will work inside of After Effects. So once we make sure that using Open Rosetta is activated, we can go back to our folder. And now if you open it up, you're gonna get this message that's saying you open it up in Rosetta, but you can see that uh, all the textures are loaded up and it's ready to go. Now back to Mike to continue with this tutorial. Okay, thanks, Ali. That was great. I'm glad you know how to do that because I am not a Mac person. Okay, so back to our design here. Remember, we're gonna try to replicate this awesome shirt animation here. So let me pause that and I'm just gonna go back to After Effects. So there's some things we need to do here. Um, in the video, if you saw, the, the shirt is a V-neck. We've got two options here. You've got a standard round collar or a V-neck. Um, and you'll notice when I zoom in, it's kind of blurry and then it you know kind of clears up. And I've got this at 100% quality. Um, you can, if you want things to move a little faster, you can take this down. Let's say we'll take it to, to 25. Or sorry, that's my zoom. There's a quality one somewhere, or there used to be. Here we go. Um, quality here, let's just put it at like quarter. And now you can see, um, you know, it, it doesn't look as clear. It'll render nice and clear. It doesn't look as clear in these views. When you zoom out, it looks fine, but when you zoom in, it's not as detailed. Uh, but it, it makes things work a little bit faster here in After Effects if you're not on the, uh, the full quality. And if you don't like quarter, if that looks too bad, you know, go to third, go to half, whatever you want to do. Um, so I'll just leave it at half for now. So we need to make this a V-neck. So if we go over here to our, again, we're in essential graphics, you'll see a few different um, folders basically. So we have dynamic lighting and I'll show you that in a minute, um, but let's let's make this a V-neck. So if we go into the V-neck folder, we just wanna turn the visibility on. And you can see that little bar was kind of loading there. It takes a second sometimes to catch up, especially when you're zoomed in. And now you can see it's placed the V-neck over the top. And now there's all these, these other things you see here where we can change colors and stuff. Let me, let me show you how all that works. So first of all, design visibility. I'm gonna turn that off. Um, that's the, the grid design that we see on the collar and you can see it on the shirt too. Now, if we had a design that we wanted to put here, maybe like stripes or a pattern or something like that, we would use this, right? And then I'll show you how to do that in a bit. Uh, using our Photoshop template. But for this one, our collar is just a solid color. So I actually just wanna make everything that's up here, um, this this kind of yellowish color from our library. So make sure you have your libraries open. You can download this library in the uh, description. There's a link in the description. And then if you just choose the eyedropper, you could just go through and change the colors. And actually that little stripe, I forgot about that. That little stripe, I want it to be more this kind of watermelon color. And then everything else I want to be that yellow color. So now our, our collar, our V-neck collar is already done. We're, we're totally done with that. So I'm just gonna, and you can, you can kind of drag things around. Like if you want to resize, um, you know, how big things are, you can, you can customize your layout here, but now let's go to the shirt. So right now we have design visibility on, which means this grid design we're seeing. What really that means is it's it's pulling that information from our Photoshop template, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. Um, I'm gonna turn it off just to show you the shirt underneath. So this is the shirt and I'll stop it there because then you can see the inside too. So I'm not worried about the neck and the collar because we've already got our V-neck on there. 
Um, but let's make the sleeves our same yellow and you can see the inside fills in too. Let's make the torso our same yellow. And, and really none of this matters because I'm gonna I'm gonna actually do all this with Photoshop. Um, but this is just to show you if you if you just wanted to control your colors here in After Effects, you can do that. Okay. And then I'll just make the overall color the same to kind of fill in the gaps. If you look at the sleeves here, you can see there's kind of like a, a blue showing through. If I make everything yellow, it sort of fills that in. And now all you really see is like shadows. Okay. And while we're here, just to make this easier to look at, let's change our background real quick. So our background color, we can make it that white. Um, maybe make it just a little darker. I like this white. It's just a tiny bit darker off white. And then the text color, I want to make this kind of like a, almost a 50% a gray. Just going to get somewhere in there. And then I'm going to change the text here. So you can see in the background, it kind of says regular t-shirt and some of the text is off the edges. That's okay. Um, if you just click on this and you change the text, I'm going to change this to just and this to do it, a period, and I'm going to click away. And you'll see it'll automatically update. And it does this for all the views. So if I go to any of my other views, everything is changing simultaneously. It's great. Uh, now, if you want to change the font, you can do that here. You, you choose any of your installed fonts. Um, you can change the, you know, if you want it bold or whatever style of the font you want. You can change the font size here just by dragging this around. Just give things a minute to sort of refresh when you do that. And I think we had it at 750. So you can also type, as you can see, italics on off, right? You can do all this stuff here. Just regular font controls like you would have in any other, um, you know, in Photoshop or in Illustrator or anything like that. Okay, so we've got everything set except the, the design on our shirt. So let me show you how that works. Remember I told you we have this design visibility. So I'm gonna turn that back on and you're like, oh no, it's blue. Well, that's because this is coming from our Photoshop file. I'm gonna zoom in just a little. So if we go over to Photoshop, you're gonna have this file that comes with the package called Add Your Design Here. And remember, it needs to be in the same place as your After Effects file and as your Assets folder. So just you know, put that all in your desktop or something. And this is basically just a template. It's got a, you know, a grid on it to kind of show you where to put things. So your right sleeve is over here, this, this arch at the top would be like the shoulder, the top of the shoulder. Left sleeve is over here, the front of the shirt, the back of the shirt, the neck stripe, which is that little, um, that little pink watermelon colored area that I just showed you. Uh, After Effects is not happy with me right now because I switched to another screen, but it will come back. Um, so that's the neck stripe there. And then the collar here. So these you can use to add like designs. So if you wanted to put stripes on the collar, you could you could put stripes across here. And when you save this, it's gonna pull it into After Effects. This is basically like a big smart object. If you're familiar with Photoshop smart objects, I hope you are if you've been working with uh, sports templates for a while. This is like a big smart object that's connected to the After Effects template. It's really all it is. Um, but I've prepared a bunch of stuff in here already to make this video easier. So uh, you'll be able to use this library to just replicate everything that I'm doing if you want to follow along. So if you remember the shirt, it has like a gradient on it. It goes from that reddish pinkish color to yellow. I've already created that gradient. I've saved it up here. I've got it down here too, um, but I'm gonna show you how you would do this if you're following along. So um, I want the gradient to kind of be underneath everything. So I'm just gonna go down here to where the grid is and I'll just drag and drop this gradient. And I want to make sure it's positioned at least vertically where it needs to be. Horizontally doesn't really matter. So that's going to give me the gradient coloration that I want on the shirt. Now I want to bring in my design. So for the design on the shirt, we have the, you can see it up here, we have the just do it on the front with the swoosh and on the back, there's the, you know, kind of the same thing. Now I built all those independently and then I just put it all together so that it's easy for you to just drag and drop this, this one thing out here and then just position it, right? So um, I want this down here just about, I want that back swoosh centered on that line. 
And I think that's pretty much exactly where I want it. So I'm gonna do that and um, just to make everything save faster, I'm gonna just turn off whatever I don't need and I'm gonna hit Control or Command if you're on a Mac, Control or Command S to save and you'll see it's saving up here. And it just takes a few seconds to save, again, depending on how much information you have here, um, how fast your computer is. And now if you go back to After Effects, be patient, um, you'll see that blue line was just kind of loading there and, and bam, now you can see our design has made its way onto the shirt. So I'm gonna hit the space bar to play it. And it's this green is kind of like it's loading. So if you let things load, it kind of buffer, things will run more smoothly. But this is kind of new information. That's the first time we've put it into this file. So After Effects is, is buffering and kind of figuring it out. But you can see it's added the design everywhere around the shirt. So if I hit space to stop that, all this green is already buffered and ready to go. So that'll play fast. And again, just kind of depending on how fast your computer is and you know your, your quality settings and things like that, things will happen faster or slower. So it's changing settings now. You can see it's buffering. So if I hit space to play this now, it's gonna it's gonna move pretty quickly. Right? Didn't get very far. So you just have to be patient with it. Again, it depends on how fast your computer is. And and for whatever reason, my computer's being a little bit slow today. Um, After Effects has actually crashed on me a couple times. I think it's just one of those days for Adobe. Um, but typically this will you know, move pretty quickly for you, especially once you've already done it. And then you can see, that's just such a really cool animation. I just love watching it. Um, then you can see if you go to the other sizes, right? It's already there. It's already there. So at this point, we're ready to export. Okay, so um, you're gonna need to make sure you have Adobe Media Encoder installed on your computer. Um, and again, if you're using Photoshop and you're using After Effects, part of the Adobe Creative Cloud suite, you should have it. You may not have installed it, but just go ahead and install it. Um, Adobe Media Encoder. I don't even have it open right now. Um, and so we wanna export these. Now, the cool thing is you can export all three of them at one time. So you can get three separate, these are five second videos, and it's one full spin or one full loop of the shirt, one full rotation. And so after we export the videos, we can actually stack those and, and make you know an unlimited amount of loops if we want to. So let me just show you how to export these. So if you go over here to the project area, um, I'm just gonna select all three of those. Those are my three compositions that I want. I'm gonna go to composition and I'm gonna say add to media encoder queue. And that is gonna take just a minute. Right, okay, just depending on how powerful your computer is. And now you can see this playing through the whole animation. Actually, it's two It's two spins. I forgot it's two spins, um, which is cool. So two spins, say it's five five second video. So let's see, media encoder. Media encoder is loaded up. And you can see the square one has already popped in here. And now there's the HD. Oh, you know what? This square, I think, is, is one I did earlier, actually. It's, it's pulling in one that I did earlier. So I'll just select that and delete it. So you can see the three different sizes have popped in here. And then there, there's just settings you can change, right? This is already set to H.264, which is going to be an, M, uh, an MP4 file. Um, and then you can change the settings by clicking on that. You can change the settings for quality and, and some other things. Um, I'll just show you how to do it on one of them here. It probably doesn't make a difference, but there's no audio on these. So I always uncheck the export audio just to, you know, hopefully make it go faster and make things be easier. And I always choose use maximum render quality and just hit okay. And then this is just telling it where to output. So it's gonna save on my desktop. If you click that, you can choose a different, you know, place to save it if you want to. So you can change the settings for each one. And then if you just hit this green play button, they'll start to render. And again, this may take some time. It just depends on how powerful your machine is. Um, so after, you know, 30 seconds or so, maybe a minute, you'll see it'll kind of catch up and it'll tell you how much time has elapsed and, and it'll give you an estimate of how much time is remaining. That's gonna vary greatly just depending on your computer's performance and, and how things just have to be working that day if you're me. I did one of these earlier and it was like maybe 20 minutes to render. 
Um, I'm, I'm gonna not do this right now. If you are doing this though, shut everything else down, like close Photoshop, you know, close your web browsers, just shut everything else down and just walk away. Just let it do its thing. Um, the more you're using the computer, the more it's gonna bog everything down. Um, so I'm gonna stop that. I don't need to actually finish or show you a full render at this point because I've already done it. So I'm going to now show you how to loop this. So how to make a loop out of it. So let's go to new composition and we'll just do square, that's fine. So here's a new comp. So on my desktop, I have the video, this video that I showed you earlier. So I'm just gonna drag that in and I'm gonna put it down here. And then you can size it. So I'm gonna hold shift and just bring this in, right? And you could, it just depends on what size you set your composition to. All right, so there we have it. And if I hit the play, it's gonna, it's gonna do the two loops. 150 frames, 30 frames per second. So that's five seconds, right? So what I can do is I can actually hit control C and then control V and make a copy. And I can just drag it over and line it up right there. And you can zoom in if you want to, but it kind of snaps to where it should be. And so now let me zoom back out. Now, if I hit play, it's going to do four loops because we did two of the videos next to each other. And then you can hit control V and you can do the same thing again. So if you want to, as many times as you want, right? This, so there's different ways you could do this, right? You can do, you can do it this way, loop an MP4 if you want to export as an MP4. If you want to export as a GIF, I like, I say GIF, maybe it's GIF. I think people say it's GIF, but I say GIF. Um, you could just use the one video and, and make it loop forever. Okay, so that's that's an easy way to loop this and just make an awesome, never-ending rotation if you if you need a longer video. And of course, if you're familiar with video editing, you can you know change the playback speed and add effects and add sound and all that stuff. So there you have it, um, awesome After Effects animated T-shirt template from Sports Templates. Make sure you head over to SportsTemplates.net, pick it up. Um, let me show you. I just want to show you one more thing while we are here. Let's go back to our actual template i want to show you the dynamic lighting so if you if you've worked with sports templates let me make this higher resolution now if you've worked with sports templates products the photoshop templates you're familiar already with the dynamic lighting it's been built here into after effects so you can use it here as well so if you just go to the dynamic lighting folder you turn it on and you can see some some additional lighting came in there on the shoulders and then you can just you can just change things. So you have your your angles here. You can just move these around and kind of see what happens. Now we've got more light coming in on this side. You can move the other way. And now we've got a bunch more light over here and you can change the opacity. So just depending on how strong, right? How how dynamic you want this effect to be, you can do that. And of course, um, if you're if you don't want it, you just turn it back off. And there you have it. So really awesome, really easy to use. Again, everything is included. You get the After Effects template, the Photoshop template, you get all the assets you need. You get the link to the UV Pass plugin that you need as well. And you can create any kind of t-shirt designs you want really, really easily and animate them in a super, super cool way um, in, in really not that much time at all. So I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. I hope this was easy for you and, and fun for you. Um, once again, please head down below, hit the like and subscribe buttons. We really appreciate it. Head over to sportstemplates.net and, and pick this up. And yeah, I, we look forward to seeing your designs. Let us know in the comments what you think. Uh, post a link to your designs. Tag us on Instagram, on Twitter, wherever you may be on TikTok and let us know. And uh, once again, guys, thank you so much for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.